Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. The Lord be with you this Easter Sunday and a warm welcome to you from all of us here at Paris Court with Kilbride. Having journeyed through Holy Week with our Saviour Jesus Christ, through Good Friday, through his passion and death, we now celebrate his resurrection this morning, Easter Sunday. Today, we believe in all the things that we cannot see. Today, we are reminded of the faith that we hold in everlasting life. Last week, we had Palm Sunday, which was an all age service. But this week is Easter Sunday, which must mean it's the same. It's an all age copper pot. Morning. Again. Yeah. Here, sit up here for a moment. Ah. Morning, everyone. It's good to have you back again this week, copper pot. Yeah. It's a busy time for you, church wise, isn't it? Yeah. Easter and, of course, Christmas. So, what do we remember this morning? The tomb was empty. The tomb was empty. Don't go too close. The tomb was empty on Easter Sunday. Three days after Jesus was crucified, three women went to the tomb, we hear in St. Mark's Gospel this morning. Yeah. With? Oils. With oils, very good, yes. But they found... What? Oh, they found the tomb was empty. What? Yes, it was empty. The stone that had been in front of the tomb was rolled away. It was. It was. And there was no sign of Jesus. Why? Because he had risen. The Lord has risen, indeed. But first, no matter what age we are, when we come into God's presence in this little square anyway, what is the first thing that we do? We pause. In this way. Oh, sorry. We pause. We pause. We take a breath. We steady ourselves on the inside of ourselves. We, we leave outside the things that have been worrying us or busying us. And we say, thank you, God, for the risen Lord. Thank you for this time that we spend together. And we just concentrate now on the presence of the Christ who is with us. Where? Everywhere. And even in there. Excellent. God of mercy and compassion, we know that our faults weigh us down and stop us from living in the freedom you bought for us by the death of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Give us the courage to name our mistakes, the strength to hand them over to you and the grace to accept your gift of forgiveness. We ask this in the name of our risen Lord, 
Jesus Christ. Amen. collect for Easter Sunday. What's that? It's the collect is a special prayer. We have a collect for every Sunday of the church's year. Cool. In our first reading this morning, read by Gordon, Hi Gordon. we hear of God's impartiality to all nations and to all people who truly come to him with their whole heart. We also hear the story of Jesus as the promised Messiah told very briefly once again. Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear. Not to all the people, but to those of us who are chosen by God as witnesses, and who ate and drank with them after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Thank you, oh my Father. 
sometimes it can be quite difficult for us to conceive of the notion of the risen Christ or of everlasting life. But it is recorded in the Gospels that Jesus appeared to many people. Let's hear these writings again that remind us in our epistle reading today. A reading from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 15, beginning at verse 1. Now I should remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaimed to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved. If you hold firmly to the message that I proclaimed to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you, as of first importance, what I in turn had received, that Christ died for us in accordance with the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the Twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to someone untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the Church of God. But by the grace of God I am what I am, and his grace towards me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. Easter morning, way back when Jesus had been crucified? Yeah. Go on then. No. Okay. Um, you remember that Mary, well, in some accounts, it's Mary on her own that goes to the tomb. Yeah. Well, in St. Mark's Gospel this morning, we hear that there were three ladies, two Marys. Yeah. And Salome. Okay. And they went to the tomb and they found it empty. And the stone rolled away and the stone rolled away. It's, it's rather amazing, isn't it? Yeah. Let's hear our reading, read by Bobby this morning. The Sabbath was over. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Solomon, bought spices so they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll the stone away for us from the entrance of the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side. 
and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Not that long ago, I was blown away by a beautiful legacy of faith held by a lady who died who was very close to God. She had reached an understanding in her life where she knew without a shadow of a doubt that Christ was with her. And it made me think, and her words made me think, that what we are called to do as followers of Christ is many things. It's generosity and kindness. It's to be conscionable, to consider every person and every situation. But before any of this, it's to actually believe. Not just believe in the resurrection as an event that happened a long time ago, but believe that Christ is with you now, nearer to you than any other person in this world can be because he dwells within you and around you. Perhaps this next year, from Easter to Easter, is a good opportunity to concentrate on that belief, the utter belief, even though we can't see him, that Christ is with us. Mary Magdalene believed. She longed for him to still be alive in some shape or form, longed for his words to be true. Let us believe the same, with the same conviction and the same depth of faith that she had, because he has risen and he is with you. You just need to be open to him. Let's pray today okay. that we renew our faith in all that we cannot see and in the presence of a Christ who will be with us forever. Well said and ever. Amen. Amen. <laughs>